What is up, my beautiful people? Onesie here. And judging by the title, the thumbnail, I'm sure you guys already know what this video is about, why you clicked on it. This is a burning crusade, what to prepare for, kind of like guide. A lot of this is from just strict memories of me. I played Burning Crusade a ton. I probably played Wrath a little bit more as far as like end game content. But as far as Burning Crusade, I mean, it was close. It was like neck and neck. And then I didn't play an expansion like those two until Legion. Now, I still haven't jumped into Shadowlands. I'm not going to get much into that right now. But I, I've heard that Shadowlands is literally right behind Legion as far as it being as good as it. So we'll see. That intrigues me. Those of you that know, Legion was where I kind of started this channel. And that's, you know, Legion was the last expansion that I loved. And now I love Classic. So I have beautiful Night Elf Rogue gameplay here of me farming for Swift Thistle. But I'm going to switch it up and we're going to jump into something a little different. First and foremost, I want to apologize about my congested ass voice. I get awful fall and winter allergies. So if that doesn't, you know at least have people you know leave a leave a like subscribe you know help me out with my allergies <laughs> i'm just playing it we got some nax footage so we're going to talk about bc bc prep i think i'm gonna make a thing out of this um like i was talking about bc is one of those expansions that i have a lot of knowledge in i have a lot of fond memories of it i played a warrior i played a warlock and a little bit i played a hunter um so i kind of touched all the bases except for healer um, I did some some healer on a private server. Don't tell anybody. Um, I played paladin, loved it. I have a paladin at level sixty, so I'll probably be doing that as well. Um, so here's some just some Nax footage to put in the background, but we're gonna be putting images and whatnot in between. So this part, a lot of people disliked about classic or had things to say about it, was the phasing, and I I believe this is gonna be the same thing they roll out. If they do, in fact, give us Burning Crusade, I think they're going to release phasing. It only makes sense. Now, I think it's only going to be four phases because of the four PvP seasons. And I believe the phases are going to follow along with that, with the one variable being Zulamon. So I'm going to go over what I think the phasing might look like. This is by no means an official, hey, this is what the phases are going to be. This is just where I think they'll fall. This is where I think it makes the most sense. Um, as far as how long we'll be in each phase, I guess that remains to be seen. But this is what I believe makes the most sense. I believe phase one, we get Karazhan, we get Gruul's Lair, and we get Mag Theradon's Lair. Those are the tier four instances. I believe we get all of those as well. I believe we also get the attunements for the other instances as well, but we'll go over that in a minute. Um, I believe we also get access to heroics. I think that goes without saying. And then, of course, PvP Season 1. Phase 2, I believe we will get Serpent Shrine Cavern, the Eye, and possibly Zulamon. So the reason why I say possibly Zulamon, Zulamon came out in patch 2.3 back in the day. It came out after Black Temple, if I recall. Black Temple was 2.1, or maybe that was the attunement. I don't remember exactly, but it came out. I believe it came out after. It came in between Sunwell and Black Temple. But the gear was not bad, but it certainly wouldn't break the system to put Zulamon in phase two. Now phase three, we get Hyjal, uh, Black Temple, and then this would possibly be where Zulamon falls if they want to follow things. And then of course, PVP season three. Um, I, like I said, I believe Zulamon being in phase two is fine. Being in phase three is fine. Maybe they make a phase four where it's just Zulamon and we get Ruins of Lordaeron or whatever the case may be, I'm not entirely sure. And then phase four, of course, maybe five if they go that route, would be Sunwell, Isle of Quildonis, which is where all the dailies are, if you guys remember, Magister's Terrace, which is the new five-man, and then PvP Season 4. I don't think we should get Magister's Terrace early. The gear in there is really good, especially on Heroic. Um, but I believe that's how the phases would go. Let me know down below if you agree or disagree. I'd love to have a conversation with you about that. So with Burning Crusade coming, one thing about Classic that I think a lot of people noticed is there... All professions are not created equal. There are some professions that are just exponentially better than others. And I mean exponentially better. Night and day better for performance, for anything in raids or whatnot. And of course, I'm talking about engineering. If you don't have engineering, your parses just are not going to be as good. My rogue, this rogue here, doesn't have engineering. My paladin that I raid on does have engineering. Um, a little different on a healer. This rogue is alchemy and herbalism. But professions in Burning Crusade, they really took a step in the right direction and balanced out the professions and basically just gave all the professions across the board extreme power jumps. Now, I'm going to go over some of the BC um, 
professions and what they give, what they don't give, things we look for, and the reason why they might be good to get. Um, now, I'm going to keep some of the Sunwell and Black Temple patterns out of the breakdowns that I do because this is more for like a prep. Like, hey, this is what I can look forward to in like the phase one or phase two of, of – um, Burning Crusade. So it's going to be a breakdown here of the more prominent professions. I'm not going to put enchanting or jewel crafting in there or mining because those are kind of self explanatory. Enchanting is always going to be good and it's always going to be useful. Jewel crafting is brand new in Burning Crusade and the jewelry you can make isn't that great. Uh, but of course, the gems, obviously, that's the, that's the pull to it. And then mining is just mining. But I do go over herbalism. So we'll go over that right now. Also, bonus points down below. Comment if you know where this is right here, this picture in the background. All right, first but not worst, we have tailoring here. Tailoring, one of those that took a big jump in Burning Crusade. It was good in Classic. There's, there, there were good things to get in tailoring, obviously, especially at the beginning. Tailoring and the professions in general in Burning Crusade, I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time on. I don't want this video to be crazy long, but... They got better, and then they, they exponentially got stronger as the expansions went on. The Sunwell patterns, even the Tempest Keep Tier 5 patterns, and the patterns in, in Black Temple are so strong. So each one of these I'm going to go over. But right here, these are some of the big patterns you can get early in Burning Crusade. Spell Strike. I mean, I remember seeing casters using Spell Strike forever. My Warlock had Spell Strike forever. You get that two-step bonus. That thing is insane. Now, the Pants, 10% drop from Murmur, which is Shadow Labs, if I remember correctly. Last boss, the big win guy. Um... The hood is a 1% drop from Nethicurse, and then you got the the white the white men hood, which was the uh, the white men set was the healing equivalent of spell strike, and then you had capes like the resolute cape. You're gonna see a lot of PVPers wanting this resolute cape early because they just want to stack that resilience. This is a world drop. Um, if I remember correctly, Nagrand was like the key place to get this thing. Uh, people farming for the uh, the tall buck mounts would get the Resolute Cape pattern all the time. I remember seeing it. You had the belt down there, World Drop. You have the the quote unquote Hunter belt there, but I mean, basically PVP or I'm sorry, DPS in general use that thing. And then an honorable mention was the Battle Cast set. The Battle Cast set was okay. Um, I just think the spell strike just was on its own level. But tailoring, these are good things you can shoot for. These were solid BOEs. If you notice, there's a lot of BOEs. The BOP patterns were really prevalent later on in the game. So like Sunwell, uh, Black Temple, even Tempest Keep. That's when you see those really powerful BOPs. And we're going to go over more of those in like blacksmithing, which is my personal favorite one. Now, next up is leatherworking. This is one of the most important professions in burning crusade and the reason why it's very simple the drums of battle right there you see in the bottom right uh it's basically heroism that you get or if you're on the alliance bloodlust on on the horde uh just that you can carry with you as a leather worker it's so powerful and then on top of that you get some of the most powerful bop items when you're choosing what type of leather worker you want to be so you have tribal elemental and dragon scale and it kind of follows along like with what class you're playing, which is what I love about the, the professions revamp in Burning Crusade. If you're a hunter or a shaman, you're probably going to go dragon scale. That's how you make the male stuff. And some of that stuff is very powerful. You can look at it right there. Very powerful equipment. If you're a, a druid or like, like, a, like a feral druid or a rogue, you're going to go elemental because you're going to get that primal strike stuff. Now, again, this is not everything. This is just kind of the the base, like the chess pieces of, of what you can get. And then if, you, if you're a like Resto Druid, Resto Shaman even, but you know, like Resto Druid whatnot, you would go Tribal and you get that healing gear, the damage and healing, all that good stuff there. And then on top of that, I talked about Twinking in my last video. Twinking is so much stronger in Burning Crusade, and we're going to go over that in a later video, but it's because of Leather Workers. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you look in the top right there, you have the Nether Cobra leg armor. That stuff is insane on level 19 twinks or smurfs or whatever people are calling them and then some of the big like boe patterns that we have here i have on the right belt of deep shadow rogues eat this up like candy i remember rogues wanting this thing making this for pre-raid bisses and then wearing it through karazan through gruel's lair through mactheridon's lair and then you got gloves of the living touch very very strong healing piece you see you got 77 healing on your on your gloves there and then last but not least again i already mentioned them the drums of battle which are just invaluable to your raid um, invaluable to your composition it just creates so much flexibility for your raid team next up we have engineering of course now engineering the mvp of classic wow um, still very viable and very good in burning crusade now 
the big thing with these are these are the goggles you can make. The goggles in Burning Crusade are so so good. And as you can see here, I put I didn't put all of them here. There's a lot of them. Um, I believe there's like 12 total. There might be even more. I'm not 100. percent But there's plate, mail, leather, cloth, all of them. They're all super good. They're all super useful. Some more useful than others. I think that the spell strike from the tailoring is better than these. But the spell strike is also boe. So you don't need tailoring to wear those. Now, if you look in the bottom left, PVPers, they love this kind of stuff. New rocket boots that came out with Burning Crusade. With these, very strong in Eye of the Storm, which is a battleground that we get in Burning Crusade. My personal favorite. Those of you that don't know, I'm sure you already do, though. It's a mix of Warsong, Gold, Chenarathi, Basin, basically just mashed together. I love it. Absolute favorite battleground. And then, of course, you have the Stabilized Eternium Scope, which you get off a Toonman. I believe it's a... 6% drop rate off a Toonman, which is the first boss in Karazhan, or most likely going to be the first boss that most guilds do. Um, he's right there at the beginning. Some, I guess, would go Moros, but I, a Toonman's right there, so you might as well do it. Uh, but this is engineering. Engineering, and of course you get your explosives. You get all the normal engineering things. There's a mount as well for engineering. There's a flying mount, so there's a um, a regular flying mount, a rare flying mount, and an epic flying mount in, in Burning Crusade. So those are all incentives as well to push through and get engineering. But the main draw to engineering that a lot of people talk about and especially used in Burning Crusade were these goggles that were just so good. Now, this is one I'm so excited about because you want to talk about Moneymaker. In Classic, Alchemy obviously was a must. You needed flasks, you needed elixirs, all those things. But it wasn't that crazy. They, they kind of took it a step further in Burning Crusade. The Alchemist Stones, really, really solid trinkets that you can get early on that are going to help you out. They're going to help you get started. But the big thing about Alchemy, the big overall change with Alchemy was the master system that they added in Burning Crusade. I'm very passionate about this because I made a ton of gold doing this. There's going to be a lot of Alchemists. There's a lot of deals that are cut. I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time right now. I just hope you can hear the excitement in my voice. So on the right there, I have the three masters that you choose. I'm going to tell you which one you should choose and which one you shouldn't choose. So as far as the, the masters go, you have Transmutation Master, which allows an alchemist to sometimes to get greater results when transmuting materials. This is fine. This is when you're transmuting like into uh, Primal Mites, Primal Lives, Primal Waters. It's Primal in, in back in, in, in BC, by the way. Um, that one's fine. It's okay. That's kind of the meh one. That's a good one. There's going to be people that take that for sure, but um, that's like the meh one. The one you should not take at all, in my personal opinion, is the Potion Master. It allows an alchemist to sometimes create an additional potion when brewing high-level potions. Is this good? Sure. But potion materials are not difficult in Burning Crusade. They're not. It's You're talking about mana potions, health potions. It's not a problem to get those. Elixir Master is the one you should take, and here is why. Not only are the Battle and Guardian Elixirs in Burning Crusade, and those are valuable in of themselves, a flask is considered an elixir in Burning Crusade. So if you are an elixir master and you're creating flasks, you have the chance to proc another flask or two, or three, I think it goes up to. I don't remember exactly. And what a lot of alchemists did back in Burning Crusade, and what I'm going to do, hopefully, please tell me we get Burning Crusade, is any extra procs that I get, typically you can work a deal with the person that you're making the flask for. You can say, hey, for every for all the for all the procs, can I get 25% of them or half of them? Can we split them in half? A lot of times they'll just do that. They'll say, hey, I need five flasks made. Any procs will split 50-50. It's super cool. I really like it. I love Alchemy just was one of my favorite revamps, and that is why, right there. So besides Alchemy, this is probably the one I'm most excited about. I haven't fully committed to what I'm going to play in Burning Crusade if they if they announce it and please announce it. Um, but it's probably going to be Warrior just like it was back in the day. I'd love to try something different, maybe a Rogue or something. But I just I loved Warrior, Burning Crusade, and Wrath Lich King. Those were just the prime times for me in my opinion. And Blacksmithing was no less. Now here I'm showing the Lionheart Executioner and the Storm Herald on the screenshot. I know those are not going to be available until late. I just want to show people what the weapon smithing gets you. Weapon smithing is so strong, obviously, for physical DPS. If you're going to be a PvP warrior and you're looking to push higher ratings in arena, you're going to want to be blacksmithing because Storm Herald, if you look at it right there, chance on hit stuns target for four seconds, coupled with Mace Spec and Warriors, was like the best 
strategy through season one and two. Now, I don't know how Blizzard's going to roll out the updates, but during season three, they revamped sword spec, or I believe they nerfed the mace proc here on Storm Herald. So it's really going to depend on what they do and how they release this, how they release Burning Crusade. If they release it with the nerf, you're going to go more towards the Lionheart Executioner route, which is what happened in Season 3 for a lot of Warriors. A lot of Warriors switched to Sword Spec, and Lionheart Executioner kind of just jumps in there, and that will kind of take that spot. Now, of course, you have the Breastplate of the Kings right there, which is if you go Armorsmith. Armorsmith, PvE-wise, uh, tended to be a little better, uh, but not... I mean, you still... The, the Mace is from... Weapon Spec Maces is just insane, by the way, as well. I, I forgot to put them on here. But I added some BOE items here as well. Hand of Eternity, really good healing mace. Uh, that's a pattern that drops in Karazhan. So you can get, or I think it's Gruul's Lair. I don't remember exactly. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Hand of Eternity's early though. Very good healing mace. It's better than the healing mace off of Prince Malkazir, which is the last boss in Karazhan that drops Light's Justice. Veilsteel Longblade, long blade, solid, solid sword. Uh, rogues would use that until they get the sword off like Nether Spite and stuff like that. So a really solid early sword to get. And then last but certainly not least, the Red Belt of Battle, which was a solid Fury Warrior um, or Rep Paladin belt. Fury Warrior is not as great in BC, sorry guys, <laughs> as they are in Classic right now. But these are some solid things. I wanted to focus more on like the PvP aspect with Blacksmithing because, like I said, the weapon's just so strong if you're a warrior. And uh, yeah, May Spec dominated at the beginning. We'll see what happens if they release it. So last but certainly not least, way out of left field, I got herbalism here. Now I know I said I'm not gonna be doing enchanting, jewel crafting, mining, I'm not gonna do any like cooking, first aid, any of that kind of stuff. I know, and you guys are probably going, herbalism? Why would you even do a breakdown of herbalism? You can't show us anything here. Well, I'm gonna show you how I made a ton of gold in Burning Crusade back in the day, and that's right here, this is Tirakar Forest, so you can see Shathra City right there above the elemental. And I circled Skedis, the area right here. Now, if you're a hunter, if you're a warlock, you can do this farm solo, and it's amazing. I did it on my warlock. It's one of the reasons why I leveled my warlock. You fly up there. You have to have a flying mount to get up there, I believe. I don't... I believe... I'm about 99% sure. And you kill the water elementals, which drop a uh, moat of waters, which will... 10 of those turn into a primal water. But the big thing is... There's these giant, like, moss giants that walk around. This is why I talk about herbalism. These big, giant moss giants that are walking around there. There's, uh, like, five or six of them, I believe, that spawn. As a hunter or a pet class, you can solo them. I believe that shamans were able to solo them, too, with, like, luck, with, like, wind fury enhancement. Shamans is what I'm talking about, if I remember correctly. When they die, you can loot them and herb them. So, out of herbing them, you get high-level herbs. High-level herbs for... for burning crusade but on top of that you can get full primal lives from them you would get like eight or nine motes of life you know things like that high level stuff and those things sold for big gold we're talking like back back in the day 30 to 40 gold a piece and you would get them just like candy off these guys the amount of gold i made up here was insane i just wanted to like make that as a mention to you guys that if you guys were looking like hey you know i really want to make gold i want to get my epic flying mount quickly we're not sure how gold is going to work as far as transferring from classic to burning crusade this is just a really solid gold farm here for herbalism i wish i had footage of it i don't have my retail accounts up and running right now and this is not in the game in classic so i had to result to a, a screenshot here so i hope you i hope you guys enjoyed this video I didn't want it to be too crazy, nothing too throwing too much information out there. It's just more like, hey, this is what I remember back in the day. I remember seeing these items. I remember people asking for these items to be crafted, using these items, using them myself, and being excited about it. Just wanted to kind of shed light on some of the things and say, hey, you know, here you go. You may not have known. Maybe the profession you wanted to run in classics just isn't good enough. Maybe you're in a guild that doesn't allow you to not run engineering. Thankfully for my rogue, I'm in a guild where they don't really mind. They would like us to be engineering, but we have enough engineering that it's not that big of a deal. But in Burning Crusade, the profession overhaul is just so good. I just wanted to go over that. This is basically version one or, you know, version one of this series. I'm going to go over like leveling stuff with Burning Crusade, things to do when you hit level 70, some of the pre-raid uh, BIS items that we can go over, you know, so the tanks going after, you know, Heroic Mechanar for the Sun Eater, which is honestly one of the best names for a sword in the game anyway, right? Sun Eater. And then the sword itself looks cool, and it's a really good tanking sword. 
but we'll go over those later let me know down below what you guys think let me know if i missed anything down below i love discussing things with you guys um, we're on a road to 1k so any like any comment any subscription goes a long long way we're almost there we're like 150 left or something like that so help me get there let me know what you guys want to see i want to be delivering content every few days and whether it be classic content or whatnot, classic's pretty much over. Um, but as we ramp up for Burning Crusade, I I, I hope we get it. But I, I am going to jump into Shadowlands probably. We'll get some Shadowlands content for you guys. Level every class to 60 again, maybe. We'll see. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is already a 20-minute video, so I apologize for that. Um, stay safe out there. Hope you guys have a beautiful holiday season. And I will see you guys at the next video.